I was diving through the Dragon's Dogma Twitter and I caught one of these notes that they had put up around some of the past design stuff from Dragon's Dogma 1. It, it basically, it's Hideki Itsunu talking about some of the things, some of the notes for development of Dragon's Dogma 2. So it's literally the hashtag is DD2 Dev Notes. He says, Dragon's Dogma 2 introduces the new Beastrin race. Originally, we planned to include them in the first game, but the technology at the time made it difficult to show multiple characters with fur on the screen. But now we can finally realize our vision. And that's, I, I just want to, I want to key off of that just for a, a couple of minutes here, because when I've looked at the footage between the second game that's coming, all the media footage that we've been looking at, all the official trailers I've been covering here on the channel, and then going back and looking at Dragon's Dogma 1 footage, and also playing Dark Arisen on the Xbox, um, on my Series X, you know, it's, it's been, I'm going to have a cat over here in a minute, possibly. Never mind. Um, there's a big, big difference in technology. We're talking, you know, if you talk dev time, it's more than 12 years between because they've got a good, I think it's around a five-year dev cycle for each one of these games. So we're talking more of a, you know, it's it's a it's a big gap. Um, so technologically speaking, there were a lot of things that they couldn't do in the first game that they have done for the second one. And also improved upon because the AI in the first game was really janky in areas for the pawns and it's a cool system and the first iteration was like a good like first draft in Dark Arisen um, but there was way too much of you know NPCs getting caught on like colliders and in corners and, and other things things that we don't see when we traditionally play like MMORPGs and we have like I mean look at you know using the follow feature in any MMORPG or Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Under Public where you have escort quests and characters that follow you. World of Warcraft is a great example as well. So the technology is there. It's not difficult to do. Um, it's just the implementation of it. So um, seeing a much better AI in Dragon's Dogma 2 is something that's got me excited. Um, also just visually everything looks a lot better. I know that in the first game some of the you know and, and I'm sure we're going to see some of it here in the second one uh, but just when you're jumping on to a, um, a, a an NPC a monster and hanging on there were only so many I mean I don't know how to put this like hooks that you could put where characters could theoretically grab on and as technology has gotten better we now have more complex skins and more complex coats and furs and te textures that we can put on these creatures which means more handholds which means a more realistic gripping mechanism for characters that they're hanging on to monsters and the footage we've seen in the second game has been leaps and bounds beyond uh, what the first game had in it so I've been loving these dev notes but this one in particular kind of triggered the desire for a conversation with me because um, I, I can also think of like Jedi Fallen Order uh, was a great game the Wookiee fur was not that good in the first game um, and in the second game the Wookiee fur looked much 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 better because they were able to improve the technology better shaders better lighting better texturing better all of these things better rendering pipeline overall optimization um, there are powerful tools out there and those tools get better over time um, a good example would be looking at the difference between unity 4 or, or excuse me unreal 4 and unreal 5 I almost said Unity. Um, the difference between Unreal 4 and Unreal 5 has been literally unreal, to be silly about it. Um, technologically speaking, it has eliminated all of this headache work in terms of lighting and shading and everything else. And that's, that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the progression of technology. So I, for one, am excited about this because it's no different than George Lucas finally being able to realize certain aspects of his dream because special effects got better and he was finally able to realize those things. According to, to Hideki, um, you know, they're finally able to realize the beast trend because of the technology. And I, for one, can't wait to see them and experience their culture as we all get ready to dive into Dragon's Dogma 2 this weekend. It is it is it is opening weekend, everybody, this weekend. Um, I got a post coming out tomorrow talking about my schedule for opening weekend. So if you liked what you saw here today and you want to follow along as I stream, create guides, do Let's Play videos, tips and tricks and big bad boss fights and all those other things, Make sure to follow along daily streams here and on Twitch. There's a Discord. There's a Patreon. All the links you need are down below. I'll see you tomorrow because we're covering Dragon's Dogma a couple times a day right now leading up to the launch.
Peace.